What's up ladies and gentlemen, Universal Mastery. So, what I do here on my channel is I break down the occult sciences to a very practical level so that you can use them and you can apply them in your day-to-day -day life using your awareness, okay? Now the first context that I want to create is giving you an understanding of who you're getting this information from, just so you understand you're getting it from somebody that is an actual practitioner and someone that actually knows what they're talking about. Okay, so the reality is, is there's a lot of people in our today's society that are talking about subjects and they actually really haven't even either reached success in that subject or uh, really experienced what they're talking about. So um, I am a, a professional occultist. I am fully initiated in Kabbalah, being the top, the bottom, the back of the tree. Um, I'm studied when it comes to the tarot and I'm also studied when it comes to astrology and uh, planetary energies and things of that nature. So once again, this was just to give you a little bit of a context of who I am. Uh, once again, yes, I am an actual practitioner. I'm not just giving knowledge that I haven't experienced. Okay? So with that understanding, now let's move into the subject. Now, it was definitely important that I created that context moving into this subject because this is definitely a deep subject. Um, just right off the bat, I want to let my viewers know that this is more advanced knowledge that I'm going to be sharing. Um, this is some deep stuff and it has direct connections to what's known as grail patterns. Um, and at the end of the video, I definitely am going to be giving a shout out to a specific channel that has offered me a lot of value in regards to coming to these understandings and uh, uncovering the science behind what I'm explaining in this video. Um, once again, just to make sure credit is put in the place where it's due. Um, so, what I'm going to be talking about in today's video is how the soul black holes itself for a person who's initiating through the clip off and specifically going to cross the abyss. Okay? So, I'm going to explain on an energetic level during the crossing of the abyss what is actually happening to the soul and what exactly can happen to a person's soul because there's actually two different outcomes of collapsing the soul into a black hole. So obviously the first thing I'm going to explain is the, you know, the black hole part because for a lot of people that's probably hard for you to understand and you, it probably doesn't make much sense to you but I'm going to you know, go into depth with that uh, in this video so that you get what I'm saying. Okay, so if you want to know what I'm talking about, if you want to know energetically what happens during the crossing of the abyss, known as DAP in regards to Kabbalah, which was known as completing the great work by Aleister Crowley, um, and is literally known to be the most important experience of the entire uh, Kabbalistic initiation. Um, if you want to know, once again, energetically what happens to the soul, then definitely stay tuned for the rest of the video. Okay, so let's do this. So, black holing the soul, okay? so. When we talk about, this is me creating a context just so you can get some clarity on what's going on here and what I'm going to be sharing, okay? When we talk about high-level occult initiations, for example, traveling through the cliff off, working through the tunnels of set, universe B, we're not just looking at something that's all esoteric and something that's all mystical and something that is just up in the air of woo-woo land, right? What we're really talking about is we're talking about a structured system that has been in existence for who knows how long and has been utilized very strategically and intentfully and has an underlying scientific backbone to the system. So what I'm trying to express and explain is that when it comes to occult initiation, in regards to the Kabbalah, we are talking about a system that can be broken down into a science. Okay? So that means that the changes or the benefits and the values that you gain from this initiatory system 
are not just mystical benefits, right? It's like, oh, if I work through the tunnels of set, now I'm, a, now I'm invincible. No one can touch me. I'm, I'm ultimately powerful just because I, I did the experience. Now, that may be true. Yes, if you actually went through the, the experience properly, yes, you may, you know, you're going to gain power from that. But we want to understand the science of what's actually happening to the energy body as well throughout this process because there is an actual science to what's energetically changing on the human being that's going through these initiations. And that's why they're gaining abilities, they're gaining psychic powers, um, and they're able to do what's known as supernatural things that the average human being can't do. Once again, the reason why they're obtaining these skills and these attributions is because there's an actual energetic change that is happening to the human energy field uh, going through these experiences. Now, obviously there's a lot of changes and there's a lot of shifts that will take place throughout this Kabbalistic initiatory journey. What this video is focused on is specifically the most important aspect of the journey, which is going to be crossing into the abyss and going through it, okay? Not just entering into it, but actually crossing it, okay? To then pop out to reach the higher uh, spheres in regards to the lower triangle of the cliff off, known as Sethariel, Gagil, and then Thamayel, okay? So, here's the deal. What happens to the energy body, specifically the soul, what happens to the soul when you go to cross the abyss? And we're going to be speaking hypothetically from a successful standpoint. So let's say we have an initiate who's going to initiate the crossing of the abyss. Obviously, they go into the abyss. Karanzan tries to test them. You know, it's a, it's a very intense experience. And let's say they do it successfully. What has happened to the person, energetically speaking, that has successfully crossed the abyss? What makes them so power, powerful, having done that experience? And why was that known as completing the great work in regards to Aleister Crowley? Okay, Even though Aleister Crowley failed, which is kind of ironic, but um, here's the deal. What happens to the soul during the crossing of the abyss is it black holes on itself, okay? So basically, and I'm going to put a link right up here for a video that you can go and watch about the science of how a black hole is formed in space because this is going to tell you exactly what you need to know in order to understand what is energetically going to take place to a human who actually successfully crosses the abyss to their soul. So check out that link, okay? Then come back to the video. Or you can watch the video and then check out the link after. But essentially what happens is there is such a buildup of dark matter energy leading up to the abyss. And with such a buildup, there is eventually a collapse that takes place, okay? You can think of it as being so built up, so dense that it has no other choice but to literally collapse on itself. And then what happens is it eventually reforms. This would be the part where you are now coming out of the abyss to reach the state of cross, crossing it. Now it is reforming into a black hole and the energetic properties of a black hole is that it is constantly sucking in energy, whether that's light, whether that's dark matter energy, it's just constantly sucking in everything. And it is producing more power for the black hole. And all the information essentially gets put on the surface of the black hole. And the black hole no longer needs information. Okay, so the black hole itself has all the information on the surface from everything that it's collapsed and potentially the things that it's sucked in, like stars or whatever it sucks in. All the information from all that stuff it's collapsed and sucked in gets put on the surface of the black hole. 
And remember, inside of the black hole, that information no longer matters because it's just this infinite, technically it's not infinite, but it is to the human perspective, it is this infinite source of energy now that is literally able to take in light. Light cannot escape the black hole, okay? And this is very prominent to understand. So in regards to the information being on the surface, what's happening to the successful initiate who's crossed the abyss and what's happening to their soul is that their soul is producing a black hole because once again, having worked up to the, the abyss, which is the, the higher end of the uh, cliffhothic tree, you will have gone through so many uh, underworld universes being the other lower spheres, the seven lower spheres, and all of that would have compiled and built up dark matter energy, okay? And then the final tipping point of the collapse, that can take place from the, initia uh, from the initiation to cross the abyss. Um, so essentially, once again, taking it back to the information that is on the outside of the black hole, is referring to the human form. So when it comes to the ego, and when it comes to the human form, the sense of self-importance, this is who I am, this is what I do, this is what I can do, this is what I think, this is what I believe, right? Sense of self-importance, directly connected to the ego. The information that lies on the outside of the black hole is the human form. Okay, so the human form is that sense of your ego that likes to latch on to all certain types of beliefs, ideas, mindsets that give you a sense of security and that security gives you a sense of self. Okay, this is the average human being. This is pretty much everybody watching this, myself included, until I cross the abyss. When you go to cross the abyss, that human form, that is the I, that is the ego, completely changes. It gets completely destroyed. Once again, the black hole will suck it in and then spit it back, spit it back out to the surface. So the black hole no longer has that information. It no longer has an ego. So the person who's black holed their soul from the crossing of the abyss no longer has an ego, but now they have a new sense of self, and that new sense of self is in the process of being born after, directly after the, the successful crossing of the abyss, which should lead you to the sense of self that is directly connected to source, which exists outside of the multiverse and is the essence of evolution and literally what is what connects everything together. So the new sense of self is not the ego. It's not the, I need to identify with things to have form, to make it real, to feel satisfied. It's now shifted into, okay, I need to evolve. I need to increase my power. And I need to understand the cosmic laws to be able to navigate that. And not necessarily that I need to logically or analytically understand it, but I need to understand that I am now a source being, and that's now my natural state. Okay, that is the new sense of self that takes place within the human being who has successfully crossed the abyss. So they essentially have lost their human form. Okay, so this is the same concept that gets mentioned in the Carlos Castaneda's uh, books, The Fire From Within, The Power of Silence. They talk about the high level shamans had to get to a point where they crossed, and they didn't really necessarily say cross the abyss, this is more so Kabbalistic understanding, shamans had their own perspective, um, but they cross, I believe it was like a bridge or something, it's in one of the books, I believe it was the fire within, they went to go cross a bridge, and that was symbolic, that was the ritual for going through the crossing of the abyss. And that experience is supposed to lose the human form. Once again, this is mentioned in Carlos Castaneda's series, uh, The Fire From Within, specifically that book, and then The Power of Silence. So what the Carlos Castaneda is talking about, losing the human form, is the same exact process that I'm referring to in regards to the Kabbalistic initiation of crossing the abyss 
black holing the soul, causing the surface information that used to be there now to exist on the outside rim of that black hole, which means it's no longer influencing the black hole, but the surface information is actually still there, but it's not, it's not in the black hole. So that means that the, the human form of the person who's collapsed their soul, all the ego about them, all the sense of self importance that was attached to their ego, that was attached to the physical plane or even the five dimensional plane that we live in, specifically the matrix, that gets moved outside of the human being's energetic influence. So this is why the, the human being that successfully crosses the abyss loses their form and no longer has an ego. Now they are essentially a source being. They are now developing their awareness of their own source being, which is, you know, once you develop the awareness, being a source avatar, okay? Which is naturally, energetically what will happen, okay? This is the example of someone who crosses the abyss successfully, okay? And obviously there's, a, once again, there's a whole experience of what crossing the abyss feels like and it's not fun and it's very challenging. And the reality is, is most people that have initiated that experience never crossed. Okay, this is a reality. There are for sure people that have done it successfully, for sure. But the reality is, is it's like one in a million actually do it properly. Okay, this is just a reality. Um, so, now we have an idea of how challenging that experience really is. Now, obviously, if you're going to become a source avatar, obviously you need to go through a pretty intense challenge to be able to achieve that state, okay? So, now what we're going to look at is we're going to look at different ways the soul can collapse on itself. So, there is a way where the soul can collapse on itself using the same science as the black hole where it's actually not beneficial. Okay, now I'm going to explain why this is. And this is going to this is where this video gets deep. If you if you think it's not already deep yet. This is where it gets deep. Okay, and I'm going to bring up something that's known as grail patterns, which is something that most people don't understand whatsoever and is something that's very high level in regards to the occult field because it's dealing with direct earth energy uh, earth energy programs that are inserted within our uh, the earth ley line systems. So these are, these are energies that are influencing mankind because they have been inserted in, you could almost say the quantum wave function of earth itself. They're embedded. These are the underlying earth mechanisms. Okay. Meaning these energies are more powerful than what spirits, than spirit energies. Okay. Because these are earth energies which stem from source. Earth energies are directly connected to source so that they are very powerful and they're vi they influence everybody. So there's a specific energy that we're going to talk about and this also will explain how collapsing the soul looks in the proper way and how collapsing the soul looks in the way that you don't want to do, the way that is going to result in you uh, experiencing eternal torture. Okay. There's literally two ways to do this. And it also comes down to torsion fields, but I'll explain this first. So the first grail pattern that we want to understand is known as the ram's horns. Okay. So I'm going to do a little bit of psychic, uh, visualization right here. And for anyone that's psychic, that's watching this, you may be able to tune into this as well and see what I'm, what I'm pulling up. But for example, I'm going to pull up love. Okay. So love, literally the emotion, the energy of love. I'm going to pull it up right now. So I'm pulling it up. We have love right here. Okay. So what is in front of me now is an actual pattern and it is known as a grail pattern. 
okay? So the way that this grail pattern is formed, love, right? Just love, like e e real love, okay? This is a very powerful energy that um, us as human beings can use, and we do use, but we also hate at the same time, right? You can love something and literally hate something at the exact same time. That's something that's unique to us as human beings. So this energy of love that we can produce is very potent. And I'm going to explain because there's a little bit of a complex uh, energetic dynamic that's within this grail pattern. So I have it in front of me now. It's been in front of me. Okay. So what I have in front of me, the way the grail pattern looks, um, for those of you that can't see it, is it is a ram's horn. So there's one ram's horn here, and it's going up, and it goes in a counterclockwise spin seven times. Okay, seven times on this side, we have it here, and then it shoots down here. So it goes up, and then it spins seven times. Okay, that's one ram's horn, and then right next to it, we have another ram's horn right here that's going in a clockwise spin seven times. Okay, seven, right there. And it's, they're both right in front of me. I have them pulled up. And let me explain what love does. Okay? This is something that a lot of people don't know. So this grail pattern of love with the counterclockwise spin going around seven times specifically, it is programmed for death and destruction. And I'm going to explain why these things are in just a minute. So the one that goes counterclockwise is programmed for death and destruction. Okay. Now we have the one that's on the other side right next to it. And it is programmed for anti-good. Okay. Anti-good. Meaning nothing good. Actually removing goodness. Okay. So once again, these ram's horns, they look like the... They look like the balls on a man. So we have these ram's horns actually built in our bodies. So they look like the balls on a man, essentially speaking. And if you add in the penis, it would be the same structure with the line and the two spirals going like that. And then the females also have it built in right in their stomach. Okay? The same type of uh, ram's horn shape. So this is explaining that this ram's horn technology that I'm explaining, this grail pattern, is actually built into our human bodies. And it has a very profound effect. So the reason why the counterclockwise ram's horn that spins seven times, seven's the number, is programmed for death and destruction is because that spiral that is at the end that goes around seven times First of all, the spiral is what's known as a torsion field, which builds the human energy field, or not builds it, but or it can it can potentially build it, but it it holds together the human form. It holds together the human's energy field in regards to their awareness, okay, in regards to what they're conscious of. So the one that spins counterclockwise and goes seven times, the seven is specific for Fibonacci sequences which equates to the number 13, um, and that is programmed, that specific number is programmed for evil, okay? And it's also directly in correlation to the seven deadly sins that are within Kabbalah. So this was an, uh, this was an energetic ram's horn grail pattern that was created a very long time ago very long time ago. I can't even give you a, a, a name of how long ago this was created, but it was discovered and it was seen psychically with the seven spirals on one side, seven on the other. And there was people that unpacked what this meant in regards to the science. So in regards to what I'm sharing with torsion fields and uh, that shape awareness and Fibonacci sequences in regards to that, why there's seven spirals. Okay. Seven is important. So once again, this is all connecting to a negative, you could say, 
connotation where, once again, the seventh term equates to the 13, which means evil. It gives you bad things. So that's why when we have the negative torsion field, this is promoting death and destruction. And then for the one on the opposite side with the positive torsion field going clockwise, that's anti-good. Okay? So, once again, we're seeing that connect back to Kabbalah with the seven deadly sins, the, double Hebrew, the seven double Hebrew letters that are connected to the seven deadly sins. So Kabbalah is aware of these ram's horns. Okay? Now, to the average human being who doesn't exist in universe B, meaning they're not attuning themselves to the dark feminine current in regards to trying to develop their evolutionary power, to the average person who lives their life unaware of the occult and unaware of their potential or even what they are as beings, these ram's horns destroy people, okay? So love in general is going to destroy people. I don't care what you say, when people fall in love, usually, usually is the case, not always, but usually the mass collective case is that they start getting more unhealthy, they start dropping routines that were good for them, they start picking up new routines that are unhealthy. Um, sometimes they start uh, resenting their partner. Sometimes they start falling into belief systems of jealousy and they start adapting all these unfruitful behavioral patterns. Another example is when people get married, which is, you know, I can make a whole nother video on that subject, but the marriage is literally a ritual being done by someone connected to the church, which is the religion that's connected to the Elohim, the Yaldabaoth, the Archons, which are the inner elites of our current government, um, and is chaotic in nature. So the whole entire process of actually getting married is signing a deal with the chaotic system that this matrix is currently formed by, and it's inserting the ram's horns within the couple in a much more prominent and solid way rather than two people that are just naturally falling in love. It's literally inserting it. It's a big ritual. And that is exactly why most people that get married end in divorce. Okay, marriage is a ritual. And it's all under this chaotic structure of the current reality we're living in. Uh, and it's been going on like that for a while. If you ever thought about it, why do most people separate after they're married? After, right after they get married, okay? The same happened with my parents. Why do they get separated right after marriage? Um, it's not a psychological thing. It's not like, a, oh, the woman wants to get on child support and leave. It's not that. It's a real energetic thing that is underlying the psychology of why people want to separate once they officially seal the deal with marriage because it is a ritual being performed inserting these ram's horns okay inserting death and destruction and inserting anti-good like in a very solid way that's why people when they get married they're like i hate you now they start hating each other very quickly and that leads to death and destruction and they separate so now that we have this understanding and I will make a whole nother video on the ram's horns, and I will make a whole nother video on love, but this is important to understand for the black holing of the soul, okay? So with this understanding of the ram's horns, which is literally the energy of love itself, so whenever someone says, I love you, and they mean it, they are inserting those ram's horns to you. Now, most people once again, don't realize this, and quite frankly, to them it doesn't matter because love feels good. Okay, and that, that you know, it is what it is. You know, if, if you want to stay unaware of it and you don't want to know about the truth of what love really does, that's fine. But for people like myself who are, in a, who are occultists, I want to know about this stuff. 
and I want to learn how to bypass that. I don't want someone to say they love me and in the back of my mind know that that is an inserted energy that is literally going to lead me down a road of destruction and anti-good. Sorry, the video just cut off, but as I was saying, I have been there before. Okay, I have been there before. I know what it's like to be in a relationship and actually love somebody and then kind of watch our lives go into that spiral of death and destruction and anti-good. I've seen it happen before in my own life, before I was involved in this stuff. So, with that knowledge though, that there are these natural spirals that are known as the grail pattern of the ram's horns. What happens for the person who collapses their soul when they go through the crossing of the abyss successfully is they are using the ram's horn of the negative torsion field. Death and destruction. Seven times. Boom. Seven. And the way that that actually physically manifests for the human being that is crossing the abyss and exerting this ram's horn, you have to choose one or the other. There's not doing both at the same time in regards to the crossing of the abyss and how the soul collapses. Okay? It, it's going to choose one of the ram's horns. Okay? The way that actually manifests is that the person who's going through the death and destruction ram's horn seven times to collapse their soul is they are focusing on increasing their own power and their own ability to reach their highest levels of evolution. And that is the energy of love that they have for themselves that manifests in the ram's horn of death and destruction. And the ram's horn itself, the way it's manifesting their reality, is destroying all of the potential obstacles, bringing death and destruction to all of the potential obstacles, or you could even say enemies, that could potentially try to stop them from successfully crossing the abyss. This is deep shit that I'm sharing, okay? So remember, the counterclockwise seven spin is manifested in that manner, where the magician is loving their own self in regards to their own increasing their own power and focusing on their own personal evolution because the spiral is created by love. So you're, you have love that is directly connected to source because what does source do? Source is evolution and it increases its own power. That's literally why it exists. To continuously evolve and increase its power. So by loving yourself and loving the fact that you're increasing your own power by focusing on your own evolutionary journey, that's source based in nature and you're creating the negative torsion field from the love that you have for your evolution and your own power which is naturally manifesting in death and destruction for everything that tries to potentially devour you or prevent you from crossing the abyss. And then your, your soul can fully collapse and then you turn into this infinite source of, which is a black hole, this in, infinite source of dark matter energy and that's constantly consuming more and more and consuming light and things of that nature that is always destroying anything that comes against it, okay? And that's also the nature of a black hole. And they're essentially infinite, okay? To the human perspective, they're infinite. And it's, it locks in that ram's horn. So this is what's known as the soul of the vampire, okay? The person who becomes a source avatar similar to Kalki. This is exactly what happens on an energetic level to their soul. Now, let's talk about what happens to the person who does it unsuccessfully. So the person who collapses their soul unsuccessfully is following this route. So they 
are giving love and light to everything around them, everyone around them trying to save people. And naturally, that love and light trying to save others, trying to save people that exist in the chaotic matrix, what that is essentially doing is that's fueling chaos because they're trying to save people that are inhabited by chaos. And they're not understanding that by focusing on themselves and their own personal power and evolution, that's what's actually going to make change in regards to the bigger scale of evolution because that's source-based. But they're thinking from self-importance, I need to save humanity. I need to save mankind. I need to save my friends. I need to save this person. I'm going to be the one that saves you. Self-important. So because they're in this state of self-importance and they think that saving their fellow man like Christ who is slaughtered on the cross or like Buddha who is poisoned under a tree, they think that that's the path to source. But what they're unaware of is that's actually the path to eternal damnation because all they're trying to save is actually chaotic in nature and they're only fueling the chaos. So they're loving the chaos around them. They're giving their love and light to that chaos, trying to save it, which is naturally creating the positive ram's horn, which is anti-good, which not only manifests in the person they're giving the love to, but also manifests in their soul. So now what the person is doing, trying to save everybody, trying to be the Christ archetype or the Buddha archetype or trying to save the world and all of those ideas, they're adding to their soul anti-good, which is destroying it, building it up with dark matter energy. And eventually, you know, the more you're in that state where you're trying to save everybody and you're, you're, you're this intense light worker, your soul eventually does collapse on itself. Eventually. It's going to take a little bit longer for the person who is a light worker who's trying to save their fellow man than it is for the black magician who understands source and is focused on their own power and their own evolution because the black magician's working through the clip off. The black magician's working through the hell realms, developing themselves exponentially. But with the, the light worker or the person who's trying to save everyone around them or their friends or whoever it is, humanity, the matrix that is naturally chaotic, they're adding the positive ram's horn seven times to their soul and to the, the world around them. So they're one, feeding the matrix more anti-good, making it more chaotic, more evil, and then adding to their soul anti-good. And by doing this long enough, it does produce so much dark matter energy from all the evil, because at that point the person's evil and they don't even know it, but it builds up so much that it does collapse on itself using the same science as the black hole. If you watch the video, you'll know what I'm talking about. But this time, it locks it into an eternal positive torsion field that spins seven times. And that permanently locks the person's soul in a state of anti-good. So they're always getting the bad end of the stick, so to speak. They're always experiencing the bad side of life because it's permanently now been added to their soul because they thought that was the path to enlightenment. They thought that was the path to light and they thought that that's what was going to save them. When in reality, that's not the true nature of this reality. And the Gnostics very well understood this, but, um, that's what happens. Okay. That these are two different ways of collapsing the soul. into a black hole, both people trying to achieve source, the black magician doing it the proper way by going through the crossing of the abyss, focusing on their own power, loving themselves, loving their own power, loving their own um, 
potential for evolution. That's what I mean by that. Like when I say loving your power, I'm not talking about egotistically. I'm talking about love for your own potential to reach source, like your own potential. Like, like what is it that I could possibly like understand when I reach source and what are the things that I'm going to be able to do with that? Like these are all ideas that will collapse the soul with the anti-clockwise, which once again, that love for yourself and that source aspect of yourself is destroying death and destruction, everything around you that comes against you which is good in nature because the matrix is chaotic. And especially when you're in the abyss, that's where chaos resides. And that's how you cross. And then the, the light worker, they probably don't even know really about the abyss. They probably don't even really know about initiation. So they haven't really got to the part, to the point where they can like cross like the black magician did, but they are pulling themselves to the abyss by creating so much evil by thinking that loving everything around them in regards to trying to save everything, trying to maintain it, trying to keep it the way it is and make it healthier and make it better, they're not understanding that that's not fixing the problem. The way you get rid of chaos is destroying it completely. This is just a fact. There's no changing it. It's not like adding, adding, it, adding love that will make it better because remember the ram's horn. This is why loving things actually is not working for light workers. It's the science of this ram's horn. This is anti-good. So when you're loving the chaos, you're creating the positive torsion field ram's horn, which is programming anti-good into the environment, into the, the matrix, and into your own soul. And doing that enough, you collapse your whole your soul the same exact way, except this time positive ram's horn. Seven times. Permanent. So you are forever locked into a state of anti-good. And that is, that is a, you know, that's just how it is. Now, just to give you a little bit of an, uh, of an understanding for those of you that are like curious about this ram's horn technology and this grail state that I, that I explained, part or a way that this manifests in real life, to give you a little bit of an example, to let you know that I'm not just making this stuff up, is we see the movie 007, right? Double O seven times, okay? 007 is a certain level of magician which applies this grail state using the ram's horns. So obviously when you're this level of magician, you have psychic vision, psychic capabilities where you can see the grail state. I can see it in front of me right now, okay? And if you're a high level magician too, you'll see it in front of me right now too. So with that being said, 007, the movie with James Bond, is a movie that was created in regards to MI5, MI6 sections of the government using the 007. That's, that's why that movie was created. So the 007 is using your wand and casting the ram's horn, programming death and destruction and anti-good in your victims. Okay? It can be used for warfare. It's one of the most powerful grail patterns to use. And it really does work. And you can cast it. But only if you are a magician that, that has the power to use the ram's horn. It's not going to work for everybody. But it, it utilizes torsion fields, which literally form awareness. So when you use and you cast the ram's horn seven times anti-clockwise, seven times clockwise, remember, double O, seven two O's right next to each other, seven spirals, okay? You are now collapsing a person's awareness, right? The death and destruction collapses their awareness with the negative torsion field, breaks it down, and then the positive seven torsion field is now reprogramming it, adding anti-good into their soul. And it's very, I mean, this is, once again, this is high-level knowledge, but this is also very powerful technology to use and you can use it on spirits too. That's a whole nother story. This is all stuff I'll, I'll teach on Patreon. Um, there's also different torsion fields, different spirals that have different numbers associated with them that don't necessarily do bad things, evil things. So when it comes to love, love is the energy that produces the natural grail state of the seven spirals going in each direction. But if you're someone who's a vampire, who's gone through the crossing of the abyss, 
and you become an, an eternal being that no longer can be affected by dark matter energy because you've crossed the abyss, you've linked with source, your soul is now a black hole constantly producing death and destruction to anything that tries to stop you on your journey, you, you are literally, literally an, inter, uh, an eternal being, which is why we get the, the statement of vampires being eternal, living forever. It's the same energetic concept, all coming down to this black hole science. Um, and love no longer affects you the same way, so you can love freely. And matter of fact, the things that you love if they are not on the same energetic level as you, in regards to what you've done to your energy field, they're going to get the you know they're going to get the aspect of love. But we live in a society where no one knows about this science, and people just accept it. They're just oh you know I love you, I love you, I love you. And that's okay. I'm not saying don't love anybody. Love's important. You know you got as a human being we need to love, right? You need to. But just know that in the back of your mind there is a science to it, and it is a what's known as a grail pattern, and there's a pathway to really not having to deal with the bad side of love, okay? The side that's programmed to really essentially destroy you. I mean, love ends in death, right? Like you get married, you have kids, you settle down, and it's done. It doesn't mean that the experience is necessarily always bad. I mean, some people fall in love and, you know, there's, there's ups and there's downs, there's ups and there's downs for sure, and sometimes it's worth it for people. They don't care. But I'm not that I'm not the person that's like that. I want to achieve ultimate power. I've always been that kind of that kind of person. I want to learn how to bypass everything that's been programmed to stop me or to prevent me from reaching the life that I know I can I, you know I can create, right? This is my mindset. So not everyone's like that. It's okay, you know. It's okay. But uh, what's another movie that I just saw recently that is promoting these ram's horns right on the front screen? Huh? I just saw a movie that was promoting, oh, you know what it's called? It's called Saw. It's a new Saw movie that's out, and it's called Spiral, hashtag Spiral. And if you look on the cheeks of Saw, you're going to see the ram's horns that I'm talking about, the seven on one side and the seven on the other. And notice they're going in one anti-clockwise, the other clockwise. This movie is using the exact same technology that I'm talking about right now. And if you look it up on Google, you'll see what I'm talking about. And it's literally called spiral. Spiral is the torsion fields, okay? This is a real science that was discovered, I believe, by the Germans. And then I think it was the Russians that really broke it down. It might have been the Russians or the Germans. But regardless, it's a real science with a real backbone to it in regards to its uh, solidity and how, how, how it actually works. Um, so yeah, so that's where I'm going to leave this video. I think I definitely went deep enough. And I think there's probably people that are like, what the fuck is going on right now? Because it's deep level knowledge that I'm sharing, but there is a science to it. And that's what I'm trying to explain. And you know, I know there's going to be people that watch this that are really going to run with it too. Okay. That's another reason why I'm making this. You know, it may not be anytime soon, but at some point in time, you know, this video is on YouTube. Somebody will come across it that, that needs it. So you know, it's one of the reasons why I make these videos. It's that source connection, you know. Um, we're going to leave it there, okay? So other than that, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Also, hit the notification bell because I post videos as often as I can. Definitely hit the subscribe button because I love to watch my subscribers shoot all the way through the roof. And uh, definitely make sure you check out my Patreon if you would like to gain access to exclusive content. Okay, so where you're going to be able to find my Patreon is if you go to the description, click the drop down of this YouTube video, you're going to see that very first link at the top called my Patreon right next to it. Um, and what I have on there, once again, is exclusive content uh, in regards to actual occult practices that I perform on camera and I teach you how to do it yourself step by step so that you get success with what you're doing and make sure you're doing it properly. Um, for example, I have a video on how to do an invocation, which means calling on a spirit and channeling it down to you, calling it to you, to then either have the spirit guide you and eventually teach you how to receive its power, or to fully just take on its power, take on its attributions, um, and alchemize that within your own energy field. Now what that does is that increases your psychic power. That increases your psychic senses, and that increases your psychic protection, okay? 
Um, and this is just one of the actual call practices that I have on there. I have other ones as well, and I'm going to be dropping other ones in the near future, very powerful ones that I've never released so far, okay? Um, so, next bit of the videos that are gonna be on there are in regards to Kabbalah. So what I do is I break down all the spheres on Kabbalah in regards to the Sephiroth and the Cliffoth, um, and I'm explaining the symbolism behind the spheres, the attributions, and the spirits associated with the spheres as well. And then to finish it off, my own personal experience having initiated through the sphere myself, which is extremely valuable knowledge because Kabbalah is literally that the underlying system of spiritual occult evolution in regards to high magic, achieving source. Okay, so this is very valuable knowledge to get a, uh, a hold of, and this is what the highest level elites in regards to the occult field understand. Okay, very ancient system. So this is all broken down on my Patreon. In order to gain access to, to this exclusive content, you have to at least be a tier two member or up. Uh, in order to be a tier two, it costs $9.95 a month, and that will literally come out to less than a dollar a day if you do the math. So there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't be able to afford that, especially with the value that I have on there, okay? I have no words for you, okay, if that's the case. Um, next thing I'd like to say is there are four tiers altogether. As you move higher up in tier, going up to the highest tier, the benefits are going to be exponentially increased. Um, I actually perform a personal vampire service for the highest tier, which I've already done my first one this uh, recent 29th and have gotten tons of results back from that. Um, so if you'd like to partake in the next one, definitely check out that service. Uh, once again, I'll let you check that out for yourself. Um, so yeah, without further ado, um, definitely make sure you go and you check out the second link below. Um, actually, hold on, reverse that. I left something out. Um, so once again, check out the highest tier. Um, that's where you're going to be able to find that service. Um, with that being said, I would love to give a special shout out to the highest tier members of the Patreon. Um, I've got all their names mentioned uh, right below that Patreon link. So huge shout out to you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I really appreciate the fact that you're taking your spiritual evolution to that deeper level, especially for partaking in the service, uh, the vampire service, because I mean, at the end of the day, that's a beneficial thing for evolution, it's a beneficial thing for you, it's a beneficial thing for me. It's it's literally a trifecta of a win-win-win situation. So huge shout out to you once again, ladies and gentlemen. Then another huge shout out to all my Patreon members in general. I just, you know, I want to make sure that you understand that I appreciate the fact that you are taking your knowledge, your studies, and your practice to that next level, okay? And then another shout out to all of my YouTube subscribers, okay? Now, go ahead and check out the second link below. That's gonna take you to uh, where you can book a tarot card reading with me. On that link, it's gonna say Square Appointments. Now, just to give you a brief understanding of what goes down for the tarot reading, is I break down three cards. Present, present, not past, present moments, near future, long-term future. And I'm doing the reading in a very subjective way, meaning I'm letting you know what my spirit and soul is trying to communicate through me to you while I'm giving you the reading, breaking it all down in a very symbolic way, all the way from the planetary energy to the zodiac to the symbolism I'm seeing on the card. And then the Hebrew letter, which can transition over to where you are in regards to Kabbalah on your own personal spiritual journey. So that is something that's very unique. I don't know anybody that's doing readings really breaking it down the way I am. I honestly don't know anybody that does readings the way I do it. I think, and I, I'm being very honest, I think I do very profound and very powerful readings that potentially is almost like doing magic on the person. I mean, tarot cards can be used for magic and I'm somebody that <laughs> comes from that belief system, comes from that that understanding and I am using it for that reason. So when I'm pulling your cards, I, even, I don't do readings where it's negative. And I'm not saying that in regards to I'm avoiding negativity in the readings. I will tell you exactly what you need to know in the reading. I'll tell you exactly what um, barriers may be holding you back or what you may be holding your back, yourself back from. But I structure the re every single reading I do in a way so that you can learn how to move forward from your potential challenges, from what's potentially holding you back and what potential experiences you may come across that will try to hold you back. I give you 
options on how to overcome them and how to maneuver them. And that in its nature is magic because I'm using the card to influence you, uh, using the, the card archetype to program into the person that's getting the reading so that they get the outcome they're looking for. Uh, it, it's a very deep science, but yeah, that's how I do the reading. Now, for example, you book your appointment, I see what time it's booked for, I'm going to do the reading on my own, meaning I'm not going to be face to face with you. Uh, that's just so that I can further get in my zone, make sure I do the reading the way I want to do it, make sure it's as effective as possible. And then when it's finished, I record a video on my phone breaking down the entire reading, which is a minimum of 30 minutes long. And then I send it over to you through WhatsApp uh, once it's finished. And the only thing that I require is your honest and personal feedback because right now I am in the process of building up a huge thing of testimonials. And so far I've done about like 45 readings and, and literally every piece of feedback I've gotten has been exponential. They've all been amazing. They've been great. Um, I haven't heard anything. I have not gotten a reading yet that was like, hey, what was this about? This was bad. I didn't like what, what I what I didn't learn anything. Every single one, great feedback. Okay, that's just to give you an idea of what, what goes down there. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's gonna wrap it up. Okay, so if you'd like to book your reading with me, check out the second link below. Okay. Um, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day or nights, wherever you are, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.